right. it was pretty, and my my friend, boyfriend, was in the army, and he happened to we happened to be at their house on that day, and uh, and we couldn't believe it, you know. And all of a sudden, it hit us. We I think we were eating. What, was it a radio? Did we listen to the radio, or you know, was it? Uh... Yeah, I don't know how we heard it because there were no TVs in those days. No, I mean it's like Twitter instantaneous it to, news. It had to I mean, be either, maybe we had the music on, you know, Christmas. Oh uh, yeah, or, one of those, or some um, kind of music. Breaking news. Because you, you always yeah. had music playing those days. Yeah. Nice music in the house. And I think that um, I should call my cousin Sue Ann. She and I were were there both with my mother and her parents up and drove up to Fort Wayne, Indiana. That's where we were. Oh, yeah. And then knowing that Mary Evelyn's boyfriend was in the service, the, uh, we were all affected, and I, everything kind of fell apart then. We just all went crazy in that house, realizing what had happened, you know. What year did Pearl Harbor happen? Uh, 1941, right? Yeah. December 7th, 1941. So how old were you? Like, I, was, I was a junior in high school, because I was born in 1925. Slightly older than Katie, then. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, and a little bit younger than we were when 9-11 happened. Yeah. What was we your, were in our early 20s when 9-11. Huh? What was your first reaction? My first reaction was, I don't believe it. The United States is supposed to be a safe, safe place in Hawaii, mm -hmm. and the darn Japanese, you know, mm -hmm. they, they took advantage of us, and just, all these people were cured. They were not prepared for it, and it was, oh, even that guy with, who was in the service who was our, there that day. Um, it, 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 I don't know how to explain it. Everybody, the next day, everybody's mm -hmm. life, just like overnight, had changed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from that, uh, the, that Sunday to the next Monday, because I was still in high school, yeah. and we all went to school, and that's all we could think about. And before you knew it, quite a few <clears throat> of our cl classmates had left and gone into the service, and they were still in high school. Really? And, wow. And then they, they started getting reports Think that some of them had been classmates. killed. And that Already? Was, that wow. Age. Well, you know. And it yeah, because I guess you're 17, you can go, you can enlist, and so, yeah, you know. Yeah, or, or maybe 18. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But it was, um, I, just, I don't know how to explain it, but it, it, it just, all of a sudden, you, you had to, you had to be careful. You couldn't buy everything you wanted to eat, like sugar, and certain things. You had to. You had to. Uh, the supplies were gone. They had a rationing. And uh, yeah, and rationing is what it that, was. That's what I heard. Um, is the was the biggest difference between like I mean the closest thing that we experienced was probably 9/11. You know when we were uh, on I think September 11th, yeah. and mm. how it was just everyone was in shock the next day. What about me? But the, th that's the big. You know, you weren't born yet, but that's the big difference is how immediately yeah, everyone yeah. you know you were rationing. Yeah, okay. mm -hmm. After 9/11, unless you lived in New York or the Pentagon. Your life wasn't directly as affected yeah. as it was back when the when the Japanese, effect, you know, because even in Indiana you were rationing yeah, stuff. Yeah, already. Mm -hmm. it, you know, look how far away from you know Honolulu you were. You were still you, the next day directly yeah. affected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was all it was all radio. There was no. Why was there rationing because of the war? I, yeah, it was just a different mindset, I think. Yeah. And, but the and, war started like we didn't after 9/11. We didn't get in the war right away. Well, right. yeah, but it was, I mean, you knew something was going to happen almost immediately. You know, they were getting ready to go over to Afghanistan. And, of course, there was a draft then, too. If yeah. you were a certain uh -huh. age, you had to register for the... Was Grandpa already in the Air Force when they... Uh, when Ken, joined. come here. He can't hear. Come here. I just joined the Air Force. Can you hear? Yeah. Come here. Cause he uh, was, how did you hear about 9-11? Really I mean, uh, not 9-11, uh, Pearl Harbor. Tell us. Oh, here. How did I hear about it? Yeah, well, right, how right. did? Where were you when you first heard he about Pearl Harbor? Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, I just next to Mark. Here, here, sit here. Oh yeah. yeah. Explain uh, 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 December seventh yeah. to you. What happened? I was in Los Angeles and I heard it on the radio that uh, Pearl Harbor was being bombed by the Japanese, and so. Uh, you were twenty years old. Yeah. <laughs> so then I got, got ready to join the Air Force because I was working for. Uh, Norris Stamping and Manufacturing Company, and uh, on a graveyard shift. So we listened to the radio all night long, and and sooner or later, 
I, I know I had to join the Air Force. You think I joined the Navy because I was so close to the Navy? The Navy there, yeah. But, but uh, yeah, why'd you choose the Air Force? I preferred the Air Force because I don't know. He liked airplanes. Yeah. Hmm. So, so then, what did you do the next day? Oh, couldn't I couldn't remember the very next day after the bombing? I don't remember. Shoot. You don't remember? But it, you know, it must have been uh, in Los Angeles. You know, it was a lot closer because yeah. you know the, it was. Uh... You know, because they worked the, the produce around Los Angeles. Oh, uh, right, all the farms, yeah. yeah. And they they had the farms. They had beautiful little farms around Los Angeles area, and. Um, so they were scared to death because they thought they were really going to have to do something with their homes and everything. And just uh, which they to my waist, oh. and so they tie my my mother would tie me to the clothesline, and then just like a dog, and I run the length of, of the clothesline because oh. I ran away too. I, I was a naughty little girl, spoiled rotten. <laughs> And then, you know, my father taught, um, it was a school teacher when I was in first grade. So he was upstairs and I was on the first floor. And my, my teacher left for a minute and I stood on my desk. I got up and stood on my desk, no teacher in my room. And my dad happened to have to come downstairs from, the, he taught on the second floor. He came downstairs. And he looked down, looked, happened to look, glance into my room, and here is little Miriam standing on her desk, <gasps> all the other kids sitting in their seats, and I'm standing on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> and he's a teacher at the school, so and yeah, I'm pretty bad. <laughs> oh, it was terrible. Uh. I, I was awful. I was, I was a brat. And I, to this day, I'm still kind of saucy, a sausage. <laughs> no. oh. Oh. Saucy. Oh, spoiled. Saucy. <laughs> saucy. <laughs> saucy. Saucy, you could say. Saucy. Uh, saucy. But it was, um, it, it was tough being an only child. I vowed I ha would have more than one, and I'd buy one if I didn't have any more than one. <laughs> My grandmother was an only child. And see me at Christmas time, and then he'd have to slip out of the house when he left. And that was probably hard because not many people got divorced back then. So that was yeah. probably hard. You were probably felt different. And yeah, he, hardly anybody did. And he, he went to call, went back to college because they were young when I got they got married, and he went back and finished college. They were high school sweet, high, so I, right out of high school, it, or in it high was school. Tough, you know. And he moved. Uh, this you were in Indiana, but didn't he? What, didn't he live in Louisville? Or he, uh, he was yeah. in charge of the a business, um, a master's degree in business at the University of Louisville. And taught there for, uh, is that, he, he retired? Yeah, he was a professor there. Yeah. 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 And he, his students loved him. And I tell you who has a personality and is, looks exactly like him is John. Really? John mm -hmm. looks like him. Carbon Curly copy. hair, baggy yeah. eyes like me and, and everything. Mm. And he was, my dad was really, really, really funny. Just funny as he could be real popular so mm -hmm. that, did he like remarry or, or date anyone after after he got divorced did he date he, anyone or remarry yeah he got married again to a real nice woman and, and I'd go visit him and she was so generous she said why don't she you and your dad go out to dinner oh that's nice he, that, that would have been, that been all I looked at me one day uh, you know, he's a fourth child now. And she looked at me and she said, Miriam, are you pregnant? And I said, yes, but Ruth is too. That was my, that was my neighbor across the street. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. Like, I'm not the only photographer. With a gun or anything. Yeah, but just worked on codes yeah. and yeah. Uh, uh -huh. secret yeah. secret uh -huh. messages. Yeah. Yeah. I can see TJ doing that. Wait, was he actually it. over in Europe then doing that? Or was no, he doing I don't the United think States? He went overseas. He was, Probably Washington, D.C. maybe. No, or? I think he was in the South Pacific. Oh, oh South Pacific. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But he was. Um, Interesting. I wish you kids could have known him because he had a fantastic sense of humor. And uh, he, he was really funny. And my mother was serious. But he was scared to fly. Yeah, she was. He was scared to fly? He was, he was a serious person. That, that's why he never came out from Louisville. Yeah. He, he came did. out on a train. 
Oh, yeah. yeah. But then when I flew, started to fly for PWA, I got him passes. Yeah. And he finally came out to... Finally flew out to California. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 But everybody has a history, you know, that you don't know about. And, um, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, I'm just so grateful that I... You know, when you when you marry somebody that you meet on an airplane, <laughs> they can't get away. Yes, <laughs> yeah. trapped in. You said. <laughs> you know what happened? Coffee to your me or else. I know. <laughs> At that time, we had a manifest, and we had to go around to every passenger and write their name for their seat. And, of course, you know what I said. And Mr. Woodward. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh Woodward. That's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you ever gotten that? People oh. calling you oh, all the time. Woodward, Woodard, yeah. Weird. Woodyard, yeah. yeah. Every Woodard. time. Woodard. It happens to me uh, at least three times a week. I'll yeah. tell you why. Because <laughs> when I get to the hotels, we have to sign in. And so I'll sign in, Sean Woodard. But when I go to log in to get the internet on the hotel, the Wi Fi, you have to put your room number and name. And it never logs in under Woodard. But if I put Woodward, it logs me right in. Oh. So the front desk clerk, when they, when they type in my name in the... In